With Omada SDN controllers, all adopted devices can be easily monitored and managed. Batch actions are also available for efficient management. Since the actions performed on the software controller and hardware controller are the same, this video will guide you through monitoring and managing Omada devices via the Omada software controller. After the devices are adopted, you will have an overview of the device information in the device list. For easy monitoring, you can customize the columns or filter the devices. To customize the columns, click for more options next to Action and check the boxes of information type. Here you have three options, Default Columns, All Columns, and Customize Columns. Default columns includes the following, IP address, status, model, version, uptime, and some other parameters. If you choose all columns, more information will be displayed such as serial number, memory usage, and clients. You can also customize the columns by selecting the desired information type according to your needs. For instance, if you check the boxes of clients and download traffic, you will see the information displayed in their corresponding columns. To better monitor the devices, you can filter them using the search box and tab bar above the list. Enter the text in the search box, or click the desired tag of device type in the tab bar to filter. You can also filter the devices by their status by clicking in the status column. Pending indicates that the device is in standalone mode or its factory default settings, and has not been adopted by the controller. Connected indicates that the device has been adopted by the controller and you can manage it centrally. Managed by others indicates that the device has already been managed by another controller. Adopt failed indicates that the controller failed to adopt the device with a default username and password because the username or password is incorrect. You can click retry to enter the correct username and password to adopt it. Heartbeat missed indicates that the communication between the controller and a device has been interrupted for over 30 seconds. If the communication resumes, the device will become connected. But if the connected device has lost connection with the controller for more than 5 minutes, the device will become disconnected. Disconnected indicates that the connected device has lost connection with the controller for more than 5 minutes. Isolated indicates that the mesh EAP once managed by the controller lost its wireless link to the root EAP but can still be discovered by other Omada EAPs. Besides the overview of device information, you can monitor the detailed information of each device through the Properties window. To open the Properties window, click the device in the Device list, or click the desired device and map, which can help you better understand your network topology. For different types of devices, a monitor panel and different function tabs are listed. In the Properties window of Gateways, you can monitor details, networks, clients, and operating statistics, and configure ports and other parameters. In the Properties window of Switches, you can monitor details, clients, and operating statistics, and configure ports and other parameters. In the Properties window of EAPs, you can monitor details, clients, mesh, and operating statistics. Most features to be configured are gathered in the Config section. Let's see an example. In the Statistics section of ER706W4G, you can monitor the CPU and memory of the device in the last 24 hours via charts. To view the device's performance, switch statistics, and application analytics, just click the chart. Some Omada devices support port configuration through the controller. You can configure the ports of Omada gateways and switches. To configure the device's ports, go to the Port section on its Properties window. Click the Edit button in the Action column. 
for instance, we can configure the status, link speed, mirroring, and PVID of WANLAN 4 of the gateway here. In the config section of each device, you can change some general settings in general, such as renaming the device, selecting the LED working method, configuring the device's longitude, latitude, and address, and setting the controller to remember devices. After a device is remembered by the controller, even if it is factory reset, the controller will automatically adopt it as long as it can be discovered. For Omada EAPs and wireless gateways, you can configure how and what type of radio signals the device emits. For example, go to the config section of ER706W4G, Find Radios. You can choose to enable or disable the 2.4 GHz band. Set the wireless mode, channel bandwidth, operation channel, and TX power of the band. In business network deployment, it's crucial to plan these aspects carefully. Leaving wireless settings on auto can result in significant interference and degrade network performance. If manual planning isn't feasible, consider enabling WLAN optimization. The controller supports two methods for upgrading the firmware manually updating the firmware locally, or automatically updating the firmware through the cloud. To update the firmware manually, download the device's firmware file from TP-Link's official website first. Take ER706W4G for example. Unzip the downloaded file to get the firmware file with the bin file type. Go to Config, Manage Device in the Properties window. Then click the Browse button in the Custom Upgrade section. Select the bin firmware file and click Open to import the file. If you want to batch upgrade devices with the same model, you can enable Upgrade All Devices of the Same Model in the site. Then click the Upgrade button. The upgrade process will start. Wait a few minutes for the upgrade results to display. To update the firmware through the cloud, go to Settings, Controller Settings in Global View. Enable Cloud Firmware Detection and Devices Update Notification. Click Save. When a new version of firmware is released, you will receive a notification, and a red dot will appear near the version of devices that have new firmware available. Click the arrow icon of these devices in the Action column the release note of the latest firmware will pop up. Then click the Upgrade button in the pop-up. The controller will start to upgrade the firmware to its latest version. If you click the Start Rolling Upgrade button in the upper right-hand corner, all the devices that have new firmware will start batch upgrading automatically. Different sites are logically separated network locations you can create a site based on the actual situation of the project, and flexibly add devices to the site for easy management. You can also move devices from the current site to a new site. Please note, however, that when this operation is completed, device configurations on the prior site will be replaced by that on the new site, and its traffic history will be cleared. To move the adopted device from its adoption site to another site, go to Config, Manage Device on its Properties window. Select the desired site from the drop-down list in the Move to Site section. Then click the Move button to start the process. If you no longer wish to manage a device, you can forget it. Go to Config, Manage Device on the Devices Properties window. Click the Forget button in the Forget This Device section. Then click Forget 
on the pop-up. Wait several seconds. You can see the device has been successfully forgotten and removed from the controller. After being forgotten, the device will reset to its factory default settings.